Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me. So we're going to get started. Today, we have a training for you on the Simplify ESS. My name is Nathan Heston. I'm an energy solutions trainer here with Briggs and Stratton. Topic of today is the Simplify ESS, its specifications, application, and some system design considerations. I want to point out that we have a whole host of trainings coming up in October. I'll be giving a training on the 9540 safety testing that we go through with UL on all of our equipment. And I'll be talking about some of those requirements that uh, housing juris jurisdictions might be requiring. Point out as well that on October the 10th, we have a whole dedicated hour of training related to temperature considerations um, and environmental uh, issues surrounding using ESS systems and about how to adapt your ESS systems to help weather proof it. Um, October 19th, we have an energy storage system and design sales made simple webinar that my colleague Daniel will be running. And then we have another webinar coming up explaining uh, battery management systems and why, what and uh, um, what the BMS does and how the BMS um, matters for batteries. So today's training, I'm going to start off by just highlighting the energy market and talk talk about the growth of battery um, battery sales and uh, battery demand. Then I will introduce ESS basics, and many of you might already know about ESS systems. We'll talk a little bit about backup power uh, with battery storage packages. We'll get into some system sizing and ESS design considerations. So really going the whole way through an ESS system. So I want to point out that uh, you should be able to use the Q&A feature um, to ask questions. And I don't see it on my screen, so I'm trying to um, get Q&A up for myself. So give me just one second. I'm not seeing a Q&A um, here, so I'm hopeful that uh, we have Q&A enabled and I'll be able to um, address those questions as they come in. Sorry about that technical difficulty. And I'm not joined by my colleague, Daniel, today. He's traveling, I believe he's in South Dakota today. Um, so welcome. Uh, let's get into it. So Briggs & Stratton purchased Simplify Power a couple of years ago now. Simplify Power has long been known as a battery manufacturer that uh, designs and, and assembles our batteries here in Oxnard, California at our factory. I'm coming to you a couple hours north of there. And Briggs and & Stratton, you probably know the household name. It's been around for 115 years, and they have a long history in generators and backup power. So now we're a complete integrated energy solutions provider, um, providing batteries, generators, all things related to backup power. There's a lot driving the market. We hit this slide each time, point out to you that... Um, there are a number of things that are making the market move. One is that everybody wants their home to have continuous access to power. We have an infrastructure that is aging. Of course, there are climate-related disasters that contributed, contribute to power outages. And then we have pretty much everything going electric. Um, uh, cars going electric. Um, I just got an oven. It connects to the internet. It goes electric. And of course, uh, many, many things for energy needs are going electric. Electric heat pumps can be as efficient, cost effective um, in, in water heating as a traditional gas powered water heater. Um, more and more things are going electric. And of course, there's the growth and demand for clean energy solutions. I do see the Q&A now. So um, Thank you. Uh, you guys pointed out it's at the bottom of the screen. It's a little different for the presenter, but um, thanks, Scott, for pointing that out for me. I did see it appear. <clears throat> My menu was hidden there. Um, so what's driving this market? Well, we just went over a number of those things. Now, I want to point out, there's there are a couple of statistics to point out. Only about 11% of homeowners currently have battery storage. Those are solar power owners have battery storage, about 11%. Um, 
And it's expected to be one out of three solar installs is going to include batteries. Another statistic that came out is um, something similar, about 11% of solar owners have battery storage and 76% of them wanted it, right? Of course, cost is that barrier there. And I'll show you ways that we can um, get into systems. Um, I do wanna point out some highlights of why, uh, why having batteries uh, is better and gives you more freedom. Um, so one, home backup, uh, of course, you want to have power when the grid doesn't, right? So you might have solar on your roof, but that doesn't necessarily give you power if the grid goes down. In fact, unless you have batteries, most likely you'll lose your, your solar power as well. With batteries, you can have power when the grid doesn't, right? Energy arbitrage, you can buy when the electricity is cheap, and use that energy um, whenever you like. That's, uh, you know, that's kind of a time of use thing. Em energy arbitrage gives you the ability to buy when it's cheap and maybe sell to the grid when it's beneficial. So if, you have, or if you're generating excess power from your solar, you can store that up in the batteries and you can even discharge those batteries to the grid when the rates are favorable, favorable for you. So you've got some you have some flexibility in when you uh, buy and when you sell with batteries. Uh, you can also optimize generator performance. You might have a generator already. You might be off grid, right? Have a generator already. You want to use less fuel so you can use that generator, charge up those batteries when the generator is running to power loads, and then turn that generator off and use those batteries to power loads. So you're not running that generator for a long amount of time. You can actually save fuel, increase the lifetime of your generator this way. I mentioned time of use before. You can buy when it's cheap, right? Charge up those batteries and then use those batteries when energy is expensive. I have this time of use rates here in California where at nighttime I can get my energy for about 14 cents. And during the peak hours when I'm using energy, I have to pay 36 to 38 cents, something like that, um, per kilowatt hour. You can maximize solar energy production. So if you do have batteries, there's a place for that solar to go. If you don't have an interconnection agreement and can't sell your excess solar back to the grid, if you have batteries, you can keep those MPPTs humming, charge up those batteries, maximize the amount of power your PV is producing. Peak demand charges. So if you have batteries and you're getting these peak demand charges, many businesses, if you use beyond a certain number of kilowatts of power, um, will give you a high power demand charge in addition to your charge per kilowatt hour consumed. Um, and so if you have the appropriate equipment, you can shave off those peaks and eliminate those high power um, charges. There, of course, are environmental benefits. You could be a good steward by having batteries. And taxes. Um, now, uh, with the IRA, batteries alone qualify uh, for a tax break, right? So you can get 30% off on your taxes um, through the IRA just with a battery install. You, you used to have to have uh, solar connected or renewable energy source connected. You can now do this just with battery, battery systems. Um, so uh, you can also save money. Uh, batteries now are making it more affordable, right? The, the kind of lifetimes we're getting on our batteries make it affordable um, to, to own batteries and um, you get a payback. And also one other thing is it's fun. Having batteries makes you pay more attention to the energy demands of your household, makes you pay more attention to the devices that you're using that consume power. Um, and an informed uh, user is a user that's probably having more fun. But what are the basics of an ESS? Again, this is really just basics. Most people know this, but the power comes into your home from a grid, right? And what, what is at the center of an ESS? First, ESS stands for energy storage system. It's pretty much default for battery storage on a house, but you can't just have batteries. You have to have an inverter. And so the inverter is kind of the hub that directs the different sources of power, right, to the loads and to the batteries and connects things. It includes a controlling system normally, and I'll talk about ours. We've got our inverter shown there. And so there's various power sources are all coming through the inverter and connecting to the home through the inverter. The Simplify ESS system consists of a wall-mountable outdoor rated battery 
This is a 4.9 kilowatt hour battery there. It's LFP technology. We expect 10,000 cycles out of this battery. If you do the math, a cycle per day, that would be 26 years out of this battery. We're expecting these to be very long lived. We get a, an unlimited number of cycle, 15 year warranty on this battery, right? So we're standing behind this battery. We're making it with very high end components. Um, and we believe we'll, we'll be best in the best in class with, with these batteries, 15 year warranty. And unlike our competitors, again, um, you're, you're one, getting a, a trusted name brand that's been around for 115 years. You know that they're gonna be there for another 15 to honor that warranty. And uh, two, we don't have any limits on that, on the number of cycles for that warranty. The inverter is coming uh, at, in six kilowatt blocks. It's a six kilowatt inverter. It surges to nine kilowatts for 60 seconds. Um, and it can short, uh, surge up to 12 kilowatts for a fraction of a second to start those large uh, well pumps and uh, uh, large electric motors, that kind of thing, compressors that, that all require a surge sometimes. It's got an energy track control app. And so this app uses a gateway to interface with the batteries and the inverter and communicate. Um, it, can, it starts off with a communication through, through Bluetooth, can communicate through Wi-Fi, or of course, an ethernet connection. I'm gonna get into those specs. Again, the inverter is six kilowatt, but it can scale. We can parallel up to four of these inverters. Um, and we have a less than an eight, millisecond switch over time. So if you want 24 kilowatts, put four of these inverters in parallel, we can do that. Of course, we have larger systems as well um, through our partnership with Solark. Um, but uh, you can parallel these units. We get that question often. Um, Energy Track is the, the app that allows us to monitor and remotely configure and offer remote firmware updates on this system. It's got a 10 year warranty. It's again, outdoor rated. It's a very easy commissioning. Energy Track is the, is the uh, app which allows us to monitor and change our system configurations. The app um, uses and monitors Briggs devices. So it can monitor your solar coming in, your generator status. It can monitor the export to the grid or import from the grid. As you see there, it monitors the batteries. Um, and allows you to remotely check your system and remotely change configurations. It also allows us a very fast commissioning. So I've installed a number of these systems and I typically can get a system commissioned and what commissioning means is turned on for the first time. I can get that system commissioned in less than 10 minutes. Uh, fleet management allows installers to have access and to monitor all the systems that they've installed as a company. It also allows them to create users for homeowners, et cetera. Again, over the air firmware updates, we've got connectivity through Wi Fi, Ethernet, Bluetooth. It's quite flexible. So, Energy Track allows you to monitor your system remotely. Um, it gives you information like battery status, uh, information about the homeowner, the, the ability to contact them quickly if an issue comes up with their system. Again, remotely monitor these installs that you're doing. The batteries that are part of a Simplify ESS, any of these batteries can be used. We have our traditional Phi battery. The Phi comes in 3.87 kilowatt hour blocks. We can parallel an unlimited number of these batteries. We've, we've done hundreds before. Um, and so these batteries can, can be uh, paralleled as many as you like. We have a minimum of three batteries needed to power the Simplify ESS, and you'll have to reduce the power a little bit on that. The power outputs we'll talk about later, but you get pretty close to three kilo or six kilowatts out of three of these batteries. That's of power. We recommend our communicating batteries. So the Amplify battery, the one the second from the left there is in um, indoor rated battery, so we don't have that. It's not waterproof um, like the Simplify battery. Um, you can do a minimum of two of these batteries for a smaller system if you're interested in that. You can go up to 60 batteries. Again, you get a 15 year unlimited number of cycle warranty on the Amplify batteries. It has an advanced BMS, battery management system there that allows closed loop communications and allows you to remotely monitor. The outdoor rated battery I spoke about in the beginning comes in five kilowatt hour blocks. 
can do a minimum of two of these batteries, a limit of up to 60 of these batteries. Again, 15 year warranty, huge, huge amount of um, uh, potential there for paralleling these batteries for large systems or small systems. Again, these can be mounted outdoors, um, they're NEMA 3R. And then of course the inverter, we can parallel up to four of these inverters um, for, for 24 kilowatts of continuous power if, if that much power is needed. I'm gonna take a brief second um, before I highlight these uh, BOSS enclosures. These are outdoor enclosures for, for the Amplify and Five batteries. And I'm gonna check the Q and A. Um, so uh, Helmut says, is the 4.9 UL95 uh, certified with the Solark inverters? I think it is. It definitely communicates with the Solark inverters. Um, and I believe I'll have to check to make sure that 9540 is complete, but I believe it is complete. And in fact, I believe the UL9540 on that battery is um, is not tied to any inverter because that battery uh, has met safety standards by UL. So we does have 9540, um, but send, send me a message. I can get you those certificates. Um, the level of voltage of the Phi and Amplify battery, good question. So we do sell the Phi battery in 24 or 48 volt blocks. The Amplify and the Simplify, the larger batteries only come in uh, 48 volts, which has been the standard. Um, we also have high voltage solutions. I'm not going to talk much about them today, but we go all the way up to 1200 volts uh, with our high voltage. Do the non Com five batteries have the 15 year, year warranty as well. No, they are still carrying the traditional 10 year uh, warranty with a guaranteed 80% uh, um, 80% uh, capacity after 10 years. So they don't they don't include the 15 year warranty. It's only on the communicating batteries. So great questions. Um, I will take the time to answer these questions um, as I go through this presentation. Keep them coming. Um, so uh, point out our uh, uh, boss cabinets, oops, sorry about that. Um, our boss cabinets, if you're looking for a nice clean install uh, where, where a lot of the wiring is built in for you, our boss cabinets can hold six of the Amplify batteries and or up to 12 with a boss 12 cabinet, 12 Amplify batteries. Um, this, uh, the, the BOSS 6 would be a 23.8 kilowatt hour um, with six batteries inside. You can go down um, to smaller numbers of batteries and then of course add them as a homeowner might grow their battery needs. Uh, the BOSS 12 would be 45.6 kilowatt hours. So pretty large system with a BOSS 12. And we do have customers that'll purchase multiple BOSS 12s. And of course you can do that in parallel several of these systems. These are NEMA 3R rated UL 95 uh, 40 certified and UL 9540A tested. We can talk about what that means uh, next week in a webinar on 9540 testing. Um, let's let's take a minute to consider why we're we're talking about battery backup power. And I don't mean to uh, create a panic or or um, suggest that that uh, weather events are. Um, constantly hitting our cities, et cetera. But I do want to point out that we do get weather events. I, I, I in California have had uh, power outages this year uh, due to both flooding and fires. Um, we have seen in Texas, there was a massive grid failure um, two years ago now, almost two years ago. Um, and, and that took down many systems, even backup power systems. Um, of course, there's even sabotage, right? Their substations have been have been shot at and taken power out. Um, the snowstorms, of course, I'm from the Northeast originally, and, and we would constantly have power outages when the weight of the snow gets heavy and drops branches on the lines. Uh, of course, electrical storms can cause power outages, and even things as simple as iguanas can climb on the lines and cause power outages. Um, this iguana example, a, a colleague had brought up that it uh, it caused outages for hours in Florida. Um, and then, of course, hurricanes. I got back from Louisiana a month ago. I'll be heading um, to, to um, the southeast here to Florida in a few weeks. Um, and hurricane season is, is upon us. And, uh, of course, there are outages um, with those kind of events. Sorry, I'm struggling. I don't have my mouse today. I'm struggling with the cursor here. 
So let's talk a little bit. This is information um, from the Energy Information Administration, the U.S. government, um, talking about the average duration of total annual electric power interruptions in the U.S. And if we if we exclude major events like hurricanes or or uh, other large natural disasters, the average American is is typically going to experience power outages that are that are less than a couple of hours. Right. With major events, that average still only goes up to about eight hours. Now, that doesn't mean that people don't get week long power outages. They do. <clears throat> but the average American can weather most of their um, most of their outage with a small battery system. And we're going to talk about what kind of battery systems make sense. I want to point out the amount of power a, a typical American consumer is using. Um, this is a annually averaged power consumption. Now, in the summer months in the south, where especially in the southeast, where it's hot and humid, air conditioners uh, use goes up. And so there's more power typically used in the summer. And then in the winter, if you're using electric for heat um, with heat pumps, you can experience more, um, more power demand there as well. But typically, there's some seasonal variations. However, if you average over a 12-month period, right, the average American is only currently drawing about 1.23 kilowatts, right? So over a 24 hour period, if you if you took one kilowatt, that would be 24 kilowatt hours in a day. Um, but typically they're only drawing about 1.2 kilowatts. Now in the South where air conditioner use is more prevalent, um, those numbers are higher. Um, and then in places like California where, where the Pacific Ocean keeps the, the climate very temperate, we don't use as much power and I'll give you an example of that. Where is this power going? Uh, power in um, typical residence is going to a number of different things, including uh, space cooling, uh, space heating, those with electric heat. Lighting is becoming less and less um, of a factor with new uh, LED and more energy efficient uh, uses, uses. We're not using incandescent bulbs, or most of us aren't using incandescent bulbs anymore. And therefore, lighting is a small fraction of the, of the energy that we use. Of course, there are refrigerators and freezers and um, kitchen devices, electric water heating, um, and heat pump water heaters can do this uh, much better. And then there are a number of other uses that in include uh, things like dishwashers and uh, washing machines, dryers, that kind of thing. So this is where the power is going, that 1.2 kilowatts that's on average being used by any American home, right? It's that power is going to those things. Well, during an outage, are you going to really want to back up everything? So the power is going to these various devices. We, we kind of have the core of the house, which is where we're, we're, we're spending mo more of our time. We're using power for our core needs, like maybe lighting for studying or electricity for maybe the television or the internet connection, computers, et cetera. And then we have many appliances that run and use some of that power, like a washing machine, a dryer, maybe you have an electric, um, uh, electric uh, water heater, those kind of things. And some of these things we're not going to necessarily want to back up. Um, so in an outage, the main panel um, can become isolated from the inverter um, because there is no power. So we isolate our ESS system from the main panel. We're not going to send any of our power back to the grid. If they're working on those lines, we don't want to electrify those lines. And so our batteries then can be discharged through the inverter to power those core critical loads in the house. And what you see behind me, actually, if you look at my image on the screen behind me, you see a critical loads panel off to, to one side here. And that critical loads panel is, is being powered off batteries in the event of a grid down situation. Our inverters require a critical loads panel to be installed. We have other options like our Solark 15K that do not. And at this point, I'm going to take just a moment to go through the Q&A. Um, so I'm getting some uh, questions. I'll try to read through them. Um, somebody's joining me from Nigeria. Here, um, how can you get simplified products in Nigeria? We, we do have a presence in, in Africa and West Africa. And, and Akwaba are welcome. Uh, my wife is from, from Ghana, and so I've spent a lot of time in in West Africa, yes, we do have installers there. In fact, we have elite um, IQ installers in, in West Africa and you can get our products there. So uh, please reach out to us um, 
training at simplifypower.com and I can connect you with uh, dealers that, that deal in West Africa. Um, Helmut, as someone told me that the FI is only certified in the boss cabinets in Canada. Um, I'm not certain of that. I would have to I would have to check, but we sell a lot of uh, our FI batteries in Canada and I don't, I don't think they all have to be in boss cabinets. So uh, it might be a local AHJ, but I'm happy to look into that for you if you like. What is the temperature ratings of these batteries and inverters? Jim, great question. I'm going to get to that. And what monitoring and control is available with the app or other uh, if internet service is unavailable? So that's a, that's a great question as well. Um, so if the internet goes down, our ability to talk to the device through the internet um, would go down as well. You can still connect to the device through Bluetooth if you're nearby. Um, Chris says, can Briggs & Stratton Inverter handle AC coupling? And if so, what is the max kilowatt? Um, that's a great question, Chris. Um, yes, we can AC couple. I'm going to get to some slides on that. The AC coupling for, for any inverter should be limited to the power, inverting power of the inverter. And so six kilowatts would be the limit for AC coupling. Um, Scott writes, although lithium LFP batteries are less expensive than uh, lithium NMC batteries, the lithium LFP batteries are still quite expensive. Is Simplify Briggs & Stratton looking into lithium sulfur, which is cheaper and more energy dense than LFP? I'm not certain that it is more energy dense, Scott, um, but uh, no, we don't have any plans immediately to look into sulfur. I have talked to um, battery suppliers uh, recently about calcium batteries, but I think the technology is not quite there. If we compare NMC batteries with LFP, and again, we use LFP, you get a lot more expected cycle life out of LFP batteries. Um, and so that's why we use them. And in fact, we use premium cells and a high-end BMS that offers a very long lifetime, which is why we, we can warranty our batteries for 15 years. Uh, Chris asks, what's the weight of the Simplify 4.9 battery? The uh, 4.98 kilowatt hour uh, wall hangable battery, I believe is 180 pounds. Um, and so typically if you're lifting it high into the air, it takes a couple of people to install. I can install one of them by hanging it on a wall bracket. It's got um, some easy handles on the side um, to help you lift it up. So if you're not lifting it too far off the ground, you can do it by yourself, but um, generally we recommend two people to install those. It's fairly easy to install because you put a wall bracket on the wall and then you just hang it like a picture frame on that. Um, what did the number 50 on, uh, I'm not sure what that question, number 50, oh, uh, number 50 on the uh, Hawaii power average means that Hawaii uses the least amount of power of any state in the U.S., um, and I assume that a lot of that has to do with heating and cooling needs being low, but also a lot of people are more energy conscious and off the grid in Hawaii. And if you're in Hawaii, um, we will be heading there in a few weeks. Um, so that's what that meant. It's just number 50. It doesn't use it that much. Can you do seamless transition from on-grid to off-grid? Absolutely. Um, yes, you can do on-grid, off-grid, um, and, and quickly, one, change configurations on the inverter, but, but basically if power goes down, you won't even notice that it goes down because it's eight milliseconds. That's uh, eight thousandths of a second to switch over. The lights don't even dim in that amount of time. What's the max elevation? Um, it's an issue here in Colorado. We don't actually have that issue because we use cylindrical cells, not prismatic cells. Um, so we don't have a max elevation, and I'll get into that in two weeks' time when we do the environmental considerations. So you can use our batteries um, at any elevation that you like, but temperature, of course, at very high elevations becomes an issue. So Marcy, good question, but we don't have that issue with our inverter. What's the continuous power of the inverter in the off-grid setup? Also, six kilowatts continuous, nine kilowatts of surge for 60 seconds. So let's keep going. I'll hopefully answer some of these. Let me talk a little bit about backup and then I'll get into configurations and we can get into specifics on, um, on the inverter, which I think many of the questions will come up. I wanna point out that we've put together some packages for backup to help educate homeowners on what to expect, right? A lot of times um, the first question you get is how long do your batteries last? Well, it's the same kind of question as asking how long does your phone battery last? 
Well, if I don't use it that much, it might last two days, right? If I'm on the screen, it might only last eight hours if I'm on the screen downloading videos all day long, right? So what we've done is we've used those national averages and we've put together simple packages with a couple, two of our batteries, three of our batteries, four of our batteries. And we listed the expected time um, during an outage that these batteries alone would last. Now, if you have solar on your roof and you're producing 50 kilowatt hours in a day, of course, you're going to get more backup power than just the batteries. Um, but the batteries alone, if you look at a two battery, um, two of the 4.9 batteries, and you're expecting that you'll probably use about 50% of the normal power demand during an outage you would use, meaning you probably won't use the dishwasher or maybe you don't use the electric dryer. You might, but the expected amount of backup you would get would be 16 hours for those two larger uh, wall mount batteries, 24 hours if you had three, and 32 hours um, if you have four. And that's really a long amount of backup time. Remember, I said that the average American only experienced, even including natural disasters, less than eight hours in a whole year. We also have packages with our smaller battery, the Amplify battery. This also has closed loop communications. You can monitor it remotely. The smallest package we're offering is 7.7 .7 kilowatt hours of battery uh, storage capacity, which should give an approximate 12 hours of backup. Um, three batteries should give 18 hours of backup and four batteries should give 25. I also wanna point out that these packages currently are including the energy track monitoring apps. And so there's some pretty good pricing out there right now. There's also a $1,000 bonus um, that comes as cash back for installing your first system. So I will get to that. Um, I am gonna talk a little bit about my home I am in California. You can see the average daily, te daily temperature um, there on the screen. So this is an average between nighttime and daytime temperature. It also shows how much energy I'm using in typical months. So if you look, there's some seasonal variation there for me, um, but I'm typically using about 300 kilowatt hours per month, uh, maybe a little less than that. If I look on a monthly um, note, I'm typically around 10 kilowatt hours. Now I've got a number of gas appliances in my house and I just don't consume that much electricity. One, I'm really close to the coast. Uh, two, um, it's, it's very temperate where I am. Uh, three, <laughs> we, we're a fairly small family, it's just the three of us. Um, and so I'm only using about 10 kilowatt hours in, in a 24 hour period. So I would get a lot more backup than a um, lot more backup than the average American customer that that would use more like 24 kilowatt hours in in a typical day. Um, so <clears throat> there are some variations in how I use the power as well. I'm typically using power in the morning and early afternoon, um, and then in the evening time again when cooking, etc. During that time from, you know, about 12 to 6 p.m., I'm producing a lot of excess solar during this time, and I can save that power up and use it in the evening when my electricity prices are very high, and of course, over the night and into the morning. So I decided to go with a three battery pack, um, package, and in fact, I get a, a very long amount of backup with this. Um, and I've gotten so much backup with this that I decided to uh, add electrical demands and I have installed a spa on my house and essentially I'm not paying any electricity on the spa. It's being run off of solar and batteries. Um, so this is a system that I ended up choosing to go with. I probably could have gone with a smaller battery package. I'll give you one more example. Um, so that's uh, the system I've been, got installed behind me right now. It's got three of the Amplify batteries. What you see in the middle is the gateway. And then there's some communication wiring and bus bars on the battery that you can see there. The app allows me to monitor my system remotely and even change the configuration. So if I go out of town, I'm maybe traveling and I see that a bad storm is going to come and um, hit, or maybe there's a fire that's threatening uh, the grid where I live, uh, what I can do is I can just change the battery reserve setting in case there is an outage. So I'll have plenty of battery to back up. These are views um, for when you're monitoring or installing a system. These are things that you can change. It, it uh, tells you information about your batteries, allows you to create uh, um, users, et cetera.
I'm going to give one more example, and then again, I'll get into configurations, and I think there will be more questions uh, surrounding these configurations. So I'm going to show a colleague. Um, uh, here is a colleague's household. He's got some uh, seasonal variations. He lives up at Briggs headquarters in, in Wisconsin, and you can see that um, there's uh, different demands depending on the time of year. It's got heating and cooling demands, and um, there's some variations between winter and summer. If we look at his electricity and natural gas usage, of course, in the winter months, he's, he's heating, um, but his electricity demand goes up and peaks in the July time where I'm assuming he's using the air conditioner. Um, of course, electricity also with uh, forced air um, uh, is, is run when the heater is running too. So you might see some um, similarities between the rise of use of natural gas and um, electricity as well. If we look at his seasonal variations again, we can look at the number of kilowatt hours that he's using. And I guess I just want to point out there's a lot going in this graph, but I don't want to spend lots of time on it. So on, on the far right side, it's showing you the number of kilowatt hours he uses in a 24 hour period. And what you can see is it averages pretty close to 24, 25 kilowatt hours for him. And that in fact is very close um, to the, the number of kilowatt hours um, that the typical American uses. Um, and so for him, we, I would recommend a package of the three Simplify batteries. And these three Simplify batteries should give him about 24 hours of, of backup power and get him through a full day. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what system layouts can look like. Uh, so this is the these are the common questions I get from from installers, well, how, how should I put this system in? What I'm looking at here is the first use case scenario, a grid tied um, simplify six kilowatt inverter. A grid tied inverter means that the power uh, from the solar is being fed into the inverter. Um, what you see on the left side of the screen, these are rapid shutdown devices. This is a, um, disc, a, a disconnect for the solar and there's a rapid shutdown button. If you need to shut the system down, it will, uh, trigger these interrupts and they'll they'll turn the solar off at the module level, which is required for fire safety reasons. Um, the power then is passing through the, the inverter. So the inverter has got two MPT, MPPTs built into it. It passes that power directly to the main loads panel, powers loads, and if there's any excess, it sends the excess out to grid. Now, one of the nice things about starting with a grid tied inverter, if somebody wants solar instead of micro inverters, is this system is battery ready. So if that customer says, hey, I'd like to take advantage of batteries, but I'm not quite ready to spend the money on it. Well, this is battery ready. And in fact, if they want to come back and install batteries two years later, very easy to upgrade their system and have some battery storage. It's also generator ready, right? This system, um, this system can take a generator in as well. And so you can couple that generator and the Briggs and Stratton inverter has the ability to control the generator, turn it on and turn it off uh, when the batteries need charged or discharged. So simple examples here um, and it's solar ready in this configuration. So somebody might have that uh, generator there. They wanna optimize their generator by adding some batteries. We can add a, a Briggs and Stratton inverter and a Briggs and Stratton uh, Boss 6 battery cabinet and then they're solar ready. So if they want to add solar in the future, they can do so. Um, so I'm going to take a minute again and answer questions that have come in. So what is the continuous power in the inverter and off-grid setup? I think I did that one. It was six. Uh, when and where are we coming to um, in Hawaii? Um, so I believe we're going to be there on the 16th through the 20th. And I'm not sure all the locations we're going to be at. We'll be at R&R &R &R and uh, Inter Island, as well as the conference that's there. Um, so Glenn, if you want to email me, I can let you know where we'll be in Hawaii. Uh, Eric says the Amplify 3 package should be um, uh, 14.96. Uh, the Amplify is actually not a 4.98 battery. It's the 3.87 battery. So the Amplify battery, the indoor rated smaller battery, it's just a little bit smaller. So that's why it wasn't 14.96. Um, uh, Glenn asked, can you use the app without having the Simplify inverter? 
for example, within Outback, not currently, Glenn. And I do think that Outback has their own monitoring platform, but we can't use our um, we can't use our energy track with with anything other than our inverter and our gateway and our batteries yet. So I guess you could potentially in the future use it with just our batteries, um, but we don't uh, currently have that yet. So good questions coming in there. Keep them coming. Um, so let's skip on to the next slide. Here's a here's another example in which we have a DC coupled solar. So I'm bringing the, the solar in directly through those uh, disconnects, those rapid shutdown devices um, into the inverter as DC. <clears throat> the inverter can take, can, you can couple up to 12 point, uh, sorry, up to 15 kilowatts into the inverter, um, but it's maximum power, maximum continuous power from solar uh, will clip at 7.5 kilowatts. And there are reasons you might wanna oversize your solar array. I have 5.1 kilowatts on my roof, um, but typically I'm getting about four kilowatts out of it, right? If I had coupled a 10 kilowatt system, I'd probably be getting close to that 7.5 kilowatts continuously for longer periods of time. So produce more energy. And so again, you can couple up to 15 kilowatts on a single Briggs and Stratton inverter. It will um, produce a power output, a continuous power output out of those batteries. Um, of uh, uh, of six kilowatts, and you can have uh, you can have nine kilowatts pass through from the grid uh, into a critical loads panel. Here's an example. Sorry, blow that mouse again. Here's an example of a larger home system. We're going to try to do most of the home here. Um, and so what I've got is again, DC coupled solar coming in. We've got three Briggs and Stratton inverters running in parallel here. Um, they are connected to eight batteries, eight of these wall mountable batteries through a thousand amp combiner. Um, and so this battery bank will power all three of these inverters in the event of a uh, grid down situation. Um, all of the loads in this critical loads panel uh, or a home, sorry, all of the loads in the loads panel um, sorry, the loads in the critical loads panel will be backed up. And so in the grid down situation, that that um, main loads panel does go down. So we still need this critical loads panel, even with the uh, three large inverters that are there. I do want to highlight some things about it. Um, so one, you get 18 kilowatts of continuous power from the inverters. You also have some redundancy here. So we've got three individual inverters. So there's some redundancy. Um, and a lot of people like that redundancy. There's also 22.5 kilowatts of continuous solar that can be run through just these three inverters, <clears throat> 45 kilowatts total you could have connected. And so you could be producing 22.5 kilowatts for long periods of time throughout the day. So that, that window of solar power um, can be increased. I'm gonna contrast this to our Solark option. And I have to admit, I'm kind of biased to the Solark 15K option here. We sell the Solark 15K. We have a good, good partnership with them. I just did a training at RE Plus together with Dylan on this, on Solark options with Simplify Batteries. Our communicating batteries, of course, are designed to work uh, seamlessly with Solarks as well as our own inverters. Um, and the Solark can also control our generators, right? Um, so one of the nice things about the Solark, one of the reasons I, I like it so much is you can, it's service entrance rated and you can pass through 200 amps of AC directly um, to, the, to the loads panel. And so basically you can come straight from the grid through the Solark into um, the main loads panel for the house. So there's no need for a critical loads panel. That 200 amp pass through is great. I'm showing this here with, I believe that's a Tygo rapid shutdown device. And this is still AC coupled solar. Um, looks like these are optimizers on here. And I know Solark is just coming out with their own uh, rapid shutdown devices and optimizers. Um, additionally, we're showing this here with 24 batteries. You wouldn't need that many batteries. Just uh, eight of these batteries would be enough to power the Solark 15K. Um, and it's a it's a very nice option as well. You would have to use their power view option to monitor um, the batteries and the inverter, um, but this is a great option as well for whole home backup. I'm gonna pause for a second, take a look at the questions. Um, does the inverter system work with optimizers to address shade issues on site? Um, 
Uh, yes, you can use optimizers with this system. Um, and yes, shading can be an issue. Most modern solar panels actually have bypass diodes built into them. There's also um, additionally split panels so that you, they, they deal better with shading. Um, and yes, you can use optimizers with the unit. In fact, our, uh, the Simplify, sorry, the Briggs & Stratton Simplify 6 kilowatt inverter has a um, rapid shut down, down transmitter built into it as well. Um, Barry says, you talked about upsizing the solar array to be able to obtain the full 7.5 kilowatts that the inverter can use. If you actually obtained 10 kilowatts, would this overload or hurt the inverter because it was in excess of the 7.5 kilowatts? No, that's the beautiful thing about DC coupling solar, um, that you could put 20 kilowatts of power, you could connect 20 kilowatts of power to the inverter, but the inverter simply... Uh, wouldn't take in that excess, right? So coupling 10 kilowatts, you might say, well, if you are if you can only take in 7.5 kilowatts, why would you couple 10 kilowatts? First off, if you couple 10 kilowatts, you're typically only getting about 85, 80 to 85% of that peak power, even during your peak times. And you're only hitting that peak for a very short time in the day. Right, so a 10 kilowatts of solar coupled to this system, you might be able to hit that 7.5 kilowatt at 10 a.m. and continue that all the way until 2 or 3 p.m. If otherwise, right, with a smaller uh, system, you probably wouldn't be hitting that peak and staying in that peak as long. And so, yes, it would clip at 7.5, but no, it would not damage the unit at all if you if you connected 10 kilowatts and actually hit 10 kilowatts. It's just the MPPDs wouldn't be producing that power. Um, the uh, the 15 kW Solar with 200 amp service is a strong competitor. Do you see Briggs and Stratton developing something stronger soon? I can't comment about um, uh, our our you know newer products. In fact, I don't have much information about them. I can tell you that um, we are continuing our partnership with Solark and uh, Solark has a 30K option and a 60K option as well. And we have battery solutions for those. Um, so I don't think our partnership with Solark is going to end anytime soon. Yes, the Solark 15K is a, is a great competitor, um, but we, we're not trying to hit everything with our inverter, right? We're trying to create a system that is versatile, scalable, so you can um, put two of these in parallel or even three or four of these in parallel. Um, but the Solark is, is probably better designed for a whole home backup than the Briggs & Stratton inverter. Um, will we come out with other products in the future? I'm sure we will. Um, but for the time being, I think that we have a good relationship with Solark and we can sell those Solarks to you probably cheaper than any of you can get them. Um, so it's it's an option that we sell, and um, and I don't know what we have on the horizon. Uh, Ruth asks, how many inverters cannot, uh, many inverters cannot be connected to each other? What would be the advantage of connecting inverters in parallel as opposed to having them separate or combining them like in your example? So when you combine inverters uh, together in parallel, um, so there are a number of things that you can do. So, I mean, one... Um, you can combine inverters, like uh, we'll have uh, people uh, create three-phase power with with uh, several of the uh, solar inverters. Um, having uh, several inverters in parallel, of course, uh, increases the maximum power output that you can have. Um, and if you are going to run them on the same circuitry, um, you would need to have them in parallel. So Ruth, uh, hopefully I answered your question. If not, please feel free to clarify. How do you propose to integrate a bi-directional inverter with capable electric vehicles and stationary storage? Well, um, when we get there, when we get bi-directional uh, vehicles, I would imagine we would be doing that through a bi-directional charger. And so possibly with time, um, we will be seeing that. At the moment, I don't know of things that are on the market, um, and I'm not sure how car companies are going to honor their warranties um, if they're using their the batteries within the car to power the home, but these are all great questions and we'll see um, see how that uh, kind of plays out in the future. Do you recommend a manual transfer switch to bypass the inverter so that if it needs to be worked on, the loads can still uh, maintain grid power? Oh, that's a good question. Um, 
I did not put a, a manual bypass system on uh, my inverter, but I do have the ability to simply shut off the breaker that connects um, my inverter to the grid. But as you mentioned, um, that will shut off those loads that you might want to keep on. So I think if you have critical, critical loads, loads that you absolutely don't want to turn off, then I would recommend a, a, a manual bypass. Um, Barry asks, or Barry says, thanks for the clarification. Good, I'm glad. Uh, Ruth says, uh, yes, thanks. Um, oh, sure. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, here we are. Let's uh, let's get through a couple more of these. Um, here's another example where we're AC coupling. So I know somebody was asking about this and uh, I plan on uh, putting some AC solar. I've got five kilowatts, 5.2 kilowatts or so of DC on my roof, which is more than I need um, for my energy needs. But I'm planning on putting some end phase units just so that I can do AC coupling and be more informed when we get questions about it. Um, so yes, we can AC couple. You can. Um, AC couple up to six kilowatts through the Briggs and Stratton inverter. Um, you have to have units that play well with, with other inverters and end phase um, is notorious for the IQ8 trying to, to block um, power coming in, but we have coupled the Briggs and Stratton inverter. Um, I personally have installed one. Um, and so yes, you can AC couple. Uh, you have to be careful to make sure, so unlike uh, MPPTs with DC coupled solar, the AC coupled microinverters have to have, um, have to, they, they're optimizing power and you have to have somewhere for that power to go. Um, in the event of a grid down, so in the event of um, grid up, then the excess power can just, of course, go back to the grids or charge the batteries. In the event of grid down situation, Microinverters are designed to shut off, so you don't really get any backup uh, with microinverters. If you add batteries, you can get backup, and when this inverter comes on, it's grid forming, so that can trick the microinverters to think that the grid is up, and you can then keep your solar producing power in a grid down event. Um, uh, and so this becomes quite complicated, of course, with a grid down event of, of where that extra power goes. And so the inverter needs to uh, uh, frequency shift in order to control the output power from those AC coupled units. So if you have AC coupled uh, system and you have questions, feel free to give us a call and our application engineers can, can talk through your design. I do want to point something out in terms of uh, battery sizing because it's an important consideration in an ESS system. I want to highlight that our batteries are designed at a C over two rating. That means they can be discharged in two hours, fully discharged. So we can we can fully drain a 100% charged batteries in two battery in two hours. That's fairly fast. Most of our competitors' ratings are closer to C over three, um, but others are are in the ballpark of where we are. That means that there is a limitation on how quickly the energy, which, which is inside the batteries, can be uh, delivered, right? And energy per time, that's power. So I want to keep in mind that with a three amplify battery system, and in fact, a system just like mine, um, you're limited to 37.5 amps per battery. That's continuous power. It can surge for short amounts of time. But at 37.5 amps per amplify battery, you can multiply that by three and you have 112 kilowatts of uh, continuous power, right? So the inverter through energy track is capable of, of realizing how many batteries are connected and can just automatically, but 112 amps means that at, at the nominal voltage of the batteries, 50 volts. So current times voltage give you power, you get approximately a limitation of 5.8 kilowatts. And so with only three batteries, you're you're not able to fully take advantage of the, the output power of the inverter, that six kilowatts of continuous, but three batteries is close enough. Um, and so you do wanna pay attention if you go with a two battery system, right? You would be limited to 75 amps and 75 amps times 50 volts. Can you do it? Sure, but you're not going to be able to, able to support six kilowatts continuously. Um, you'd be able to support that for a short amount of time. Um, but that would mean that you would be limited to closer to a little under 4,000 watts of uh, continuous power, um, 3,800. 
So just keep that in mind as you're designing systems that the size of the batteries is not just the size of the batteries is not just um, uh, related to how long the batteries will last. It's also related to the power output the batteries can have. Just uh, a quick note on temperature. If you're installing systems in particularly cold or very hot climates, it's important to, keep, important to keep in mind that the closed loop batteries offer you a broader range, the closed loop communication batteries. Those are the amplify and the simplify batteries. They have an advanced BMS in them that allows them to actually operate all the way down to negative 20 degrees Celsius for charging and discharging and discharge all the way up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit and charge all the way up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So for the Celsius numbers, that's negative 20 Celsius to 50 and 60 Celsius. Um, so you get this broader range. And the reason we can do that is that the Amplify and Simplify batteries have temperature control built into the BMS. And one of the problems that can arise with batteries is a slow migration of lithium during the charging cycle into what's called the anode material. Um, so it's typically graphite in all lithium batteries. And so by having this BMS that monitors temperature in multiple locations inside the cell pack, um, the Amplify can slow down the charging rate to protect the batteries, but still trickle charge them. And that trickle charging um, will start to warm them up. So at negative 20 Celsius, we can slowly charge at one amp um, per battery. And then we can e increase that charge to three amps as the batteries start to warm. And then eventually we can hit that optimal seven Celsius to 50 Celsius range where we're, we're recharging those batteries full tilt at 37 and a half amps per battery. Um, so this is a nice feature of the closed loop communications batteries for, for um, cold temperatures. We also have heating pad solutions, heaters that can be used to warm the batteries when they're inside the cabinets. And those can be built directly in their special order. Uh, but if you're interested in something like that, we do offer it. Here are a couple of nice examples uh, showing the Simplify battery cabinets in use. Uh, this system actually has, it's a really nice system. Somebody sent in our tech support. They've got um, uh, a wind uh, wind load here that's actually um, being uh, used to to uh, dispel extra energy being produced if that if that wind power is is overproducing. A um, couple of uh, outback controllers there, um, and um, and then on the right side, I want to highlight uh, our Boss 12s. I think this is at a library in New York City. Uh, we're one of three battery manufacturers that um, is approved by the New York Fire Department for installations in, in high rises in New York. Um, so anyway, I showed you, I wanted to show you a few pictures of installs. I also want to highlight for you, we have an elite installer qualification program. Um, and so if you are an installer installing our batteries and you're installing your first system, contact us, send us an email, training at simplifypower.com. We're currently offering a $1,000 sign-up bonus for installing your first system. Um, and we also give a $25 cash back. It's paid out quarterly um, per battery that you install. So if you install uh, 20 batteries in a, a quarter, we'll, we'll send you a check um, for $500. So it's, a, it's, it's some free money. And it's a way for us to advertise all of the different installers that are installing our products around the world. Um, so uh, Jim says, what grid tie inverters by other manufacturers can be AC coupled to your or Solarx's inverters? And have these been tested by Briggs and Stratton slash Solarx? Um, so uh, typically the word uh, AC coupled um, is used for the way that the um, way that the batteries are added. So you're using AC coupled solar coming into the inverter, which sends that power to the batteries. So if the power coming from the solar, either through a string inverter or through micro inverters is AC, um, and then you need an inverter to change it back to DC for battery charging. Um, and so I, I'm not sure if I answered your question, but but basically you, we, you wouldn't need to use a second inverter if you already have the Simplify inverter in place or the Solarc inverter in place because those inverters are capable of sending the power directly to batteries. Conversely, micro inverters like an end phase inverter or string inverters, right? They are not capable of sending power directly to batteries. 
Um, and so if you have end phase units or if you have string inverters, um, uh, you would need to change that back into DC to send it to the batteries. And a lot of people already have micro inverters on the roof. So no need to change that system design. We can just bring that AC right into our, our Briggs and Stratton inverter and then add the batteries. So hopefully that, that answered the question um, there. The next question. Um, Thank you for clearly stating the battery's amp hour rating is C over two. When comparing other batteries, how do I determine their C rating when they state amp hours? Um, that's a good question. Uh, battery manufacturers should at least give you the continuous current draw. And oftentimes that's limited by the BMS. Um, is there an industry standard for this? With lead acid, it seems to be C over 20. I think there's a little bit of confusion here because the capacity is typically done, um, so capacity testing was typically done with lead acid at a C over 20, so a very slow discharge rate. Um, so the faster you discharge the battery uh, the, due to the Poikert effect, the, the more heat you're generating and less capacity it seems to show. So if you discharge a battery slowly at C over 20, you'll get the most power out of it. And the standard used to be C over 20 for lead acid. If we if we discharge, so our capacity ratings are done at C over five, meaning we do a five hour discharge cycle. And I think that's fairly standard for generating capacity numbers in the industry, but I'm not well informed enough to answer for other companies. And in fact, some batteries, when you see them listed as 10 kilowatt hours, um, I think it's questionable if you really get 10 kilowatt hour, hours out of them. Ours are guaranteed to be, um, and so we have that guarantee. It's, you know, most people do not capacity test their 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 batteries when they first get them, but but maybe you should, right? So you're comparing apples to apples. Um, so the C over two is the maximum, Ruth. The typical power draw, most people are going to use, you know, discharge their batteries more slowly than that. And so our capacity ratings are done at a C over five, meaning a five hour discharge cycle. Um, Jim says, for starting with an SMA inverter and PV system, for example, and later adding the Briggs and Stratton um, solar battery system, that's a good question. Um, I think we have had some problems with SMA, and so I'm not exactly sure where we are on that, Jim. So uh, we used to be able to use our communicating batteries with SMA inverters. Um, and I think they've changed their, they changed some of their software and we're having trouble with the communications. Um, but uh, email us because AC coupling can be a little bit tricky and we can let you know or even try it out in our uh, um, research and development center where we have lots of different inverters so we could test it without you having to do so. Um, so thanks everyone. I think that's the it, it for the questions and we're probably at the top of the hour a few minutes over. So thank you for your attendance today. Um, please stay tuned for more trainings and uh, send us an email if you have additional questions. So thank you so much. Have a good day.